Okay, so well, thank you uh, for the invitation. So um, the presentation I'm going to be talking about is called uh, Inequalities and the Voices of the Marginalized Studies. Um, I'm here to represent actually three organizations. Uh, so we have ADD International, LPage International, as well as Sight Savers. And um, these three organizations got together about a year ago uh, because we were working on two vulnerable groups that are not included in the MDGs. So we're talking here about people with disabilities and um, older people. So before I'm going into that, um, I'd like to provide a quick overview about inequalities. And as you know, uh, inequality was a value that's been highlighted in the Millennium Declaration uh, in 2000. However, when it was time to do the MDGs, that value uh, got pretty much lost in translation. So um, now, like it's been said earlier, the UN consultation on inequalities has identified that it is actually the obligation of member states to address inequalities because it's a persistent global challenge. And uh, inequalities uh, should be a key driver for the post-2015 development framework. Uh, so in terms of the scale of the problem, I'm going to just give you uh, two <coughs> slides, not going to be too long, uh, with statistics. So in terms of aging, uh, currently we have more, uh, more people age over the age of 60 than to children under the age of 5. And by 2030, people age over 60 will outnumber children under the age 10. Now in disability, uh, between 15 and 20 percent of the population worldwide live with some form of disability. I mean it's one billion people, so it's huge. And in this one billion people, uh, we have 80 percent of people living in developing countries, so again, facing great risk of poverty. Um, and aging is can also be associating with this higher probability of uh, living with a disability. So I wrote down that more than, I mean, I took that statistic, more than 46% of people aged 60 years of age and over live with a disability. Um, and in terms of, um, Inter interest, um, sorry, we've been also very much interested by um, issues related to mental health, uh, so related to, let's say, schizophrenia, depression, Alzheimer. And here I just put a, a statistic about dementia, uh, where the number of people with dementia worldwide is currently estimated at 35.6 million. So it's twofold, it, with a twofold rise estimated by 2030. And numbers more that tripling by 2050. Okay, I'm going to stop that. Uh, stop here with the statistics, um, simply because there's no more statistics mm -hmm. really to give you. Um, that's pretty much one of the problem. Um, there's no systematic ga data gathering. There's no disaggregated data by uh, by aging or by disability. Oh, so uh, yeah, by yeah. And then and the other problem that we have is that actually. Uh, people with disability or older people are just simply not consulted, they're not involved in the discussions. Um, so with that context in mind, ADD, LPage and Sightsavers decided to get more data and to create the voice of the, the, voice of the marginalized study. So I put a picture here um, with the mainly like the, the, the researcher in Bangladesh, so I'm going to come back to that. Um, we have three organizations that have been very much interested by our work. So it's Alzheimer's Disease International, Basic Needs that focus on mental health issues, and the Secretariat of the African Decade for Persons with Disability. So they all show an interest in this initiative, uh, as well as ODI, which has an interest in on issues related to inequality. Um, so we've been working with ODI uh, on a paper relative to the lack of data, the need for better data collection, and the need to adjust key instrument in international survey instrument. That paper is, is finished here. It's the first time I see the paper today, so I'm very pleased. It's been written by Emma Semen and Laura Rodriguez Takushi. They're here in the room, and we're going to be launching that paper in the coming weeks. So, um, The other, uh, I'll say, big partner that's been interested 
by, by our initiatives um, is IDS, the Institute of Developmental Study. Um, so they've been interested by inequality and they specialize in participatory research action. So we, we, uh, we decided to work with them and they actually become the lead researcher for that study we conducted in Bangladesh so with Cathy Oswald and Danny Burns. Um, so now I'm going to talk about the study, which is actually the purpose is to gather the voices of people with disabilities, older people and people with mental health issues, and provide qualitative input to inform the planning of the post-2015 framework. We decided to state people with mental health issues because is it, you know, they're often uh, forgotten within the people with disabilities, so we, we wanted to make clear that they were included as well. In terms of research question, uh, we had two research questions. So what do people with disability, older people and people with mental health issues understand as the causes of their social, economic and political exclusion? And how can a systemic understanding of exclusion enable the identification of action that contribute to greater inclusion of people with disabilities, older people and people with mental health issues? So one research question actually focuses on the causes and one uh, research question uh, focuses on um, the action that needs to be taken concretely. So in terms of research design, like I say, we, we've done a pilot and it was in Bangladesh with our colleagues there. They've been very busy for the past six months. Uh, and be we've been using a participatory action research so pretty much what it means is that we contacted local NGOs and um, that we were working with and we decided that to check with them if some of the staff were, were interested to become researchers for the studies. So we had 11 that accepted to be trained as researchers. And then uh, we also contacted uh, some people that were very much marginalized themselves, so older people and people with disability in difficult situation, in situation of poverty, uh, little support from family, for instance, or excluded from the community, etc. So they were beneficiaries of this organization. And they also been trained um, as researchers, so we call them the community peer researchers. In terms of the process, uh, Danny, uh, Cathy, and our colleagues in Bangladesh uh, conducted three workshops. The uh, first one in November, where it was more like an explanation and a training on how you know, to become the researcher. And the second one in January to see how everything was going. And the last one was actually in April, and it was to analyze uh, the stories that's been collected um, by all these researchers. So it's not interviews, it's actually real life stories. Um, now, we have 140 stories that's been collected. Let me tell you, it's quite a lot to analyze. We pretty much finished with the analyze of the analysis of the result, but we I'm not going to talk about that today uh, because we need to check with the researchers in Bangladesh if they agree with what they've collected. So it's really uh, like a work all together. Um, what I can tell you and what they enjoy and learn in the process and what they found difficult. Um, the researchers, they enjoy being in, including in the, in the whole process, meaning um, designing the study, creating the question for the, for to, get to, to get the stories, um, collecting the stories, and also being involved in the analysis of the data. So that was very inclusive, they enjoyed that. Um, you know, they had an understanding of the life of older people and people with disability, but, but the people themselves that were disabled or older, realizing that they were not the only one, um, it just felt like they felt more positive, they felt more supported, they felt less isolate, isolated and more empowered uh, to go back in their community to speak up and, you know, to talk about rights and, and so, um, it was quite an empowering experience, actually. Um, there's other things I can talk about, but I'm not really rushed by time. So, uh, but they also get like some gain some new, let's say, uh, technical and uh, soft skills. I can go back to it. Um, what they found difficult is to actually uh, talk directly to people with learning uh, difficulties or 
people with mental health issues. Um, why? Because usually it's the relative who's going to be talking for them. So it was very difficult to really get the voices of these people. They're not being listened to. Um, same problem of communication and this, this time with people with hearing impairment. Not everybody in like very remote uh, communities speaks some kind of official sign mm. language. It doesn't work that way. So even if you would have bring a, an interpreter, uh, you know, the communication barrier is, is huge. Um, older people, being older people, just felt like talking about issues related to the communities, but didn't realize that maybe they had needs as well. And um, overall, people had a tendency to speak about uh, stories that were positive as opposed to stories that negative. But uh, obviously, it's understandable because it's never really fun to go back to something that's been difficult to, to live, right? Um, um, so I'm going to leave that to that. OK. Now, so we don't have the result, but we do have some very clear key ask for the post-2015. Um, so the first one is the right-based uh, framework which f with inequality and non-discrimination non as priority theme. In the disability field, we have a convention, the Convention on the Right of Person with Disability. We would love for it to be used. And in the ageing field, we've got the Madrid International Plan of Action and Ageing. So it's the closest uh, plan of action, the closest thing to, uh, let's say, a convention. Same thing, that needs to be used. Uh, we would want a cross-cutting theme on equality and non-discrimination in all the development goals. The full and equal participation of people with disability and all the paper, all the people in the development on the framework. They need to be included in the discussion. We don't want to talk for them. We need to talk with them, really. Um, and three other key ask. Again, the data needs to be designated by age, gender, ethnicity, and disability. With no data, people are simply invisible. We just don't see them. Mm. Um, better monitoring mechanism on aging and disability. The health goal will, uh, needs to be applied to everyone, not just the one we can reach. And, and finally, a goal on delivering the, so the universal adoption of social protection flow for everyone. Last slide, the next steps for the Voices of the Marginalized Study. Uh, so we also a member of Participate, which is uh, a coalition uh, funded by DFID, led by IDS and Beyond 2015. So they've been doing a little movie in Bangladesh, and we hope that's going to be shown at the MDG, MDG Summit in 2013 in, in September. The report, a uh, final report, is going to be finalized in May, and then that's going to be available on our website, and hopefully we're also going to do a launch. Uh, we've got, obviously, like I said, the, the paper of Emma and Nora. Um, and, you know, publication in the fall, input in the M for the MDG Summit, and... Um, Last thing but not the least, we would love to extend the study to another three countries, but we're looking for funding. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, if you have any idea, we're there. And that, that's it for me. Thank you very much indeed. Really, really interesting. <laughs> Very interesting to hear also, we often hear in this room about the outcomes of research, very interesting to hear a little bit about the process as well. Um, fascinating, thank you. To some extent, we're going from one extreme to another now with uh, Alex's much more quantitative presentation. So let's move straight on to that. Thank you.